Gentlemen, I am talking about traveling through time. The time machine was a work of fiction, but Mallet soon discovered there was science to support the mysterious notion of time travel. And the source was none other than Albert Einstein. Einstein theorized that space and time were linked so that one could imagine space-time as a sort of fabric or sheet. With his general theory of relativity, Einstein showed that a massive object, like a planet, a star, or black hole, actually warps the fabric of space and time. In fact, Einstein believed that gravity, the force that binds us to the Earth and keeps the Earth in orbit around the Sun, is really just an effect of this warping. For Mallet, this mind and universe bending idea has far reaching implications. Because if you could generate enough gravity to twist time into a loop, perhaps you could create a pathway for moving backwards and forwards through time. Gentlemen, I am talking about traveling through time. But time travel wasn't a subject that could be studied by serious scientists out in the open. As a matter of fact, I used the cover story that worked for me. I studied black holes because black holes allowed me to understand how Einstein's theory affected time. And every it was a crazy idea, but it was considered legitimate crazy. Black holes, the massive remnants of collapsed stars, have an almost unmatched gravitational power to distort space and time, which is exactly what Mallet wanted to do. For inspiration, Mallet turned again to Einstein and his most famous equation, E equals mc squared, which showed that matter and energy are just different forms of the same thing. So following Einstein's theory, light, which is energy, should be able to warp space and time just like a massive object does. In other words, if gravity can affect time and light can create gravity, then light can affect time. There is a harp facility directly where the beam appears to be originating from. Uh, it's called uh, the Icecat Ram Fjordmon facility. Uh, the island that everybody was seeing this thing over is the northernmost part of Norway called Tromso. It's a little island. And they were looking southeast, and that's where they were seeing it was coming from the southeast. And this HAR facility is directly southeast of Tromso. So the location yeah. matches perfectly. What we're seeing is definitely not a rocket because if you look at some of the pictures that are released on the Norwegian websites, you have 18 layers in the spiral. You also can see, if you look at the Daily Mail link, that there is a photograph of it taken in infrared. And the heat signature of the spiral is so substantial that in infrared it actually shows up very bright. Now that's something they slipped in there. They didn't actually mention why that's important. But you have to remember, the stuff that's coming off the edge of a rocket is going to lose heat very quickly once it hits the atmosphere. The conventional explanation is actually laughable. But of course the other big part of the story is that at the end you see this black hole that shows up. It, the spiral turns into a black hole, which widens very substantially. There's one video in particular where you see this black hole make a very sudden, wide movement. And it's very, very obvious when you look at this that what you're seeing is some kind of projection from the ground. The we can understand how circulating light beam can twist space and time by a simple analogy with a cup of coffee. If we think of the coffee in the cup as being like empty space and we think of the spoon as being like a circulating light beam, then you can see what happens to the coffee as I stir it. The coffee swirls around. Well, that's what the circulating light beam is doing to empty space. And we can see the effect of this in the case of the coffee by putting in a coffee bean. As I swirl it around, the coffee bean gets swirled around. In the case of the laser, as the beam is circulating, we put a subatomic particle called a neutron in. And as we stir the space around, the neutron will get swirled around, just like the coffee bean. Now, remember, in Einstein's theory, space and time are connected. So that swirling of space will cause the straight line of time to be swirled into a loop. 
and along that loop in time, we can go from the past to the present to the future and then back into the past. The problem is the infrared signature is so high in terms of the amount of heat coming off of this thing that you would literally need not kilowatts of power but gigawatts of power in order to run something that would generate that much light and that much temperature. And, of course, HARP facility would have just the right amount of power mapped into it already to be able to use for a purpose like this. I will say that I also got an email from an insider, and all I can say is she's very knowledgeable, and she said in no uncertain terms, this is Bluebeam. This is exactly what it does. This is what it looks like. It's Bluebeam. Uh, so if that's true, then the spiral is only one of any of a variety of things that they could do with it, which I would agree with. I think that uh, these mystery halos that you've seen over uh, Russia, and I believe there's also one in um, somewhere around Bosnia, uh, they are obviously UFO-like in the way they look, and they are bright glowing rings in the air which have been filmed by people in their cars and put on the nightly news in Russia to the effect of, making people ask the question, hey, do you think this is a UFO? The missile story might be like a comfortable place that you can reside in for a while to kind of like keep your worldview from falling apart. Mallet cautions that a time traveler could only journey back as far as the moment that the time machine was first turned on. In other words, if I turn the device on today and I leave it on for 100 years, then someone 100 years from now could travel back 75 years, 50 years, 25 years, all the way back to the moment I turned the device on. But they can't travel earlier than that because the device didn't exist earlier than that. And it's the device that's creating the effect. So there's nothing for them to time travel to materialize into. But I see this very much as people trying to knock down the wall and get to the truth of what's really going on with disclosure here. I have found video of this exact same spiral thing that showed up in Norway but there's videos of it from 2006 in Russia and there's a video of it in China published in April 2009 on the internet. Now that doesn't mean it was made in April 2009, that just means that we know that it can't be any newer than that. This limitation means that Mallet's time machine could never give him the capability to travel back to 1955 to save his father's life. To do that would take some technology from out of this world. Theoretically, an advanced alien civilization might have a time machine that was switched on thousands of years ago. We may be able to use their time travel to go back to visit our ancient past because if they have developed time travel, let's say 10,000 years ago, it would still have the same limitation. But once we encounter them, we could use it. And perhaps someday we may be able to visit ancient Egypt and ancient Rome. And then a loop is set up of possible, impossible, happened, it didn't happen. But Mallet believes recent advances in theoretical physics suggest that these paradoxes aren't a problem at all. Many physicists now believe in the far-out notion that our universe is just one of many parallel universes. So that when you go back in time, you might actually be entering a parallel universe in which you can alter events without affecting the universe you came from. We believe that the river of time can have whirlpools. Whirlpools, by which you may be able to go back and meet your parents before you're born. Or perhaps even fork into two rivers, by which you can actually alter the past to create an alternate universe. These are all theories that are at the very forefront of modern physics today. The human species is now evolving a hundred times faster in the last 5,000 years. And what that also means is that if you took somebody from 3,000 B.C., that person is more similar to Neanderthal than they are to you and me. That's how fast our DNA is changing. Dr. John Hawkes from University of Wisconsin has proven that. So we already know that we're going through this massive evolutionary spike. We already know that we've had a massive increase in technology in the last 300 years. What I'm saying is, don't keep waiting for something to happen 
It's going to happen right in front of your face. It's going to happen right now. It's going to be no denying it, and you're not going to have to wait for it. And we are seeing now the manifestations of things we never thought possible, an unimaginable manifestation of this weird spiral in the sky that looks like a painting. It does not look like a natural phenomenon at all.